Meet the Farmer TV is made possible by the generous support of Planet Earth Diversified, Makia Video Productions, and Frank Melly Productions, with additional support from Flavor Magazine, serving the Piedmont's local food and wine culture. Here we are in Charlottesville, Virginia, outside Java. We're going to talk to Judy Berger about their local food program. They've pushed to use 20 to 25 percent local product in their meals. We'll examine the impact on the local farmers, the local community, other organizations like KTEX Culinary School. We'll also look at the impact on the individuals consuming the meals, how their conversations about the food, as well as the extra nutrition and excitement about local food have changed everything that's happening in the kitchen here at Java. We're here at Java in Charlottesville with Judy Berger, and we want to know, what is Java? Java is Jefferson Area Board for Aging. We are called an area agency on aging, of which there are many in the state of Virginia and 600, over 600 in the United States. Um, we came into being from money from the Older Americans Act that says um, government will oversee localities taking care of their older folks, and that's where it all began. So um, Now, Java, is that funded, or is that just a mandate that It's that a mandate, you... and it's funded. Okay. Um, we receive funding from federal funds, state funds, local governments, and private donations, as well as grants. So um, it, it sounds like a lot of money, but it's not really that much money, so we're always looking for those private donations. Um, but there are many AAAs, that is Area Agency on Aging, around the state of Virginia that face the same issues that JABA faces. And a lot of folks have asked me at all these local food things that I go to, what the heck does JABA have to do with local food? Why do you all care about that? And the answer is really pretty simple. JABA cares about seniors and older adults and their health and nutrition. And if you want really good, tasty, healthy food, to me, local's the answer. Um, Java also cares about sustainable communities. We think it's important to build communities that are healthy for all people to age in as we get older. And um, supporting local produce and local farmer also supports our mission. Now, how do, what, do, what do the residents think of, of the food that, that you get? Do they see a difference that you're getting local food? Do they know anything's happening? Or is it just something you're doing in the kitchen and nobody notices? when they're eating it? I sneak stuff in their food all the time. Yeah. <laughs> that local food, I just slide it in there. Now, actually, we have, um, we have residents, that is folks who live at our assisted living facility in Mountainside. We also uh -huh. have clients out in the community who come to our senior centers. And we have clients who come to our adult daycare centers. So this kitchen <laughs> provides food for a number of people, not a just in this people, facility. Not all those people I just named, but a number of people. We provide about 1,000 meals a week. Wow. Um, so when it comes down to feeding local produce, it's a much bigger job than just putting it in the menu and sending it out. Because we feel like we want to tell the seniors what it is they're eating, where it came from, how we cooked it, how they can meet the farmer who grew it. And next thing you know, they're sitting around the table talking about the days that they used to farm. And you know, okay. you don't have to convince older adults to eat local produce. That's what they ate growing up. Right. So this becomes a reminiscent thing for them and a, a social um, experience as well. Well, that's interesting. So, so you you are doing this just on your own. You want to have uh, more local food. You're setting some goal to to change your menu for a certain percentage, or did this come from an organization, or where well, where's the impetus for making these changes? Because there's got to be some effort. Right, and it, it really just started here at Jabba. Our CEO is um, very. Um, supportive of local produce and he, he asked me, you know, what are the chances of getting some local produce into our menus? And I thought, well, I can look into it. I don't see why not. And he said, I don't know, 20, 25 percent. And so that's the goal we ran with. It was okay. not predicted or predetermined or anything by anybody but Gordon saying, well, that would be cool. Let's do 20 to 25 percent. So that's what we did. And the easiest way to, to explain that to you is that a meal consists of five different elements. And the five elements are um, predetermined or mandated by the Virginia Department for the Aging, also known as VDA. VDA says you got to have a meat, you got to have a dairy, you got to have a whole grain, you got to have a fruit and a vegetable. Five elements, and if one of those is local, that's 20% of your menu right okay. there, 20% of your meal. So that's what we started with. 
Some days we'll have three local elements, and the next day we may only have one. Another day we may not have been able to outsource any, but if the average is 20 to 25 percent on a regular daily basis, we're happy. And we met that goal last summer. So tell me some of the challenges or impediments or barriers, things that that may seem like impossible to someone that you've worked through and actually found some benefit from? Um, there are several challenges. The way we look at them though is opportunities. The challenges are never barriers, it just means you gotta think outside the box and you gotta get creative and you gotta be patient. One of the barriers is where do I find local produce? Well gosh, I don't know, I mean I drive by Joe Schmo's farmer, his farm every day, but does he sell what I wanna buy? Well, I don't know. Let's. Uh, you know, and, and, and so where do I get the produce? Who do I call? Do I just start with the yellow pages? Well, there aren't farmers listed in the yellow pages. <laughs> so you talk to the extension office and they give you some folks who are selling farm, uh, selling um, uh, retail or wholesale from their farm. You go to the farmer's market, you introduce yourself. You say, hey, I, you know, I work for an institution. I'd like to buy some of that stuff. Can we have a working relationship? Um, I've spent a lot of time actually going out to the farms and looking around and meeting the farmer and, and trying to be legitimate as much as I can. Um, another um, issue is the transportation of the local food. Do they bring it to me or do I have to go out and pick it up? Oh. And that depends on the farmer, so transportation becomes an issue. Um, another issue is storage. If I buy something, you know, several bushels of something and it's not already packaged for the freezer, then I gotta have a place in my refrigerator to store it. Um, the preparation of that food to be put into a menu. Um, you know, I can I can buy uh, eggplant, but I gotta cut up the eggplant. You know, I can't. I, buying it locally means I've got to prepare it and get it to a position that it can be cooked. So in many cases, most of the items that you were using were already pre-prepped, maybe refrigerated or frozen. Yep. So it's not like you're substituting a case of fresh eggplants from. Uh, a commercial produce supplier for a case of fresh eggplants from a farmer, Correct. you're actually taking frozen packages and now getting real mm -hmm. whole eggplants and you have to turn them into right. that product. Right. If I, if I buy green beans from a farmer, I have to snap them and wash them. Uh, if I buy green beans from a distributor, um, a large food distributor in this area, um, they come frozen, they're snapped, they're washed, they're ready to throw in the steamer. Well, how do you do that? Did you hire a whole bunch and more staff or how did you handle all this extra prep Well, we time? have a very willing staff to begin with and we were able to work on some staff positions so that they could be brought into the kitchen a little bit more but even more than that we we developed partnerships with people in the area and other organizations. KTEC's right up the road from us and they have students in a culinary arts program. Now what is KTEC? KTEC is um, the technical school right up the road here, Charlottesville Albemarle Technical Education Center. Ah, okay. They have a culinary program? They have a culinary So they have wannabe program. chefs that you're training? They do have wannabe chefs. Hopefully someday those um, students will become um, viable members of the food industry someday, whether it's as a chef or manager of a kitchen or even washing dishes. Anybody who can work in the kitchen is great for this So industry. by bringing in the local produce, you've actually expanded the benefit to the community of by providing these internships Absolutely. for the uh, school where they could actually learn and get some real hands-on experience. Absolutely, and they're, they're managed by kitchen staff that train them every step of the way, not only in the preparation of produce, but also in the cooking of the produce, also in how the kitchen runs. Um, and the beautiful thing about, you know, Jabba may serve seniors, but we, we in incorporate people from all ages to do the service that we do. So it becomes an intergenerational activity and to me, if you teach young students how to buy and prepare and cook local produce, that's something they'll probably do for the rest of their lives mm. and pass it on to their kids. So you then have an even more sustainable agricultural system. So what you've described is, is a huge community impact from just changing from this package of frozen prepared beans to some raw beans and that you've supported the local agriculture, but because you have to handle it different, it's expanded the, the interaction, the scope of the kitchen here. Right, and even sometimes when we get beans in, we take the bushel out there and let the clients in our daycare, our adult activity center, snap them and break them, and they sit around and tell stories and talk about when they were growing up as uh -huh. kids, and it's, a, it's just a wonderful social program to go with it. Wow. So this is Kim White. 
and she's our head chef here at the Hillsdale Kitchen at Java. And she um, works with our interns from K-Tech and oversees them while they do the prepping of the local food. She orders all the local food. Um, she stores it, cleans it, cooks a lot of it. Sarah also cleans, uh, cleans and cooks some as well. Sarah. Um, <laughs> Kim probably does the majority of it, though. So, so Kim, what's, what's the biggest difference that you see getting local stuff in uh, versus the, the packaged, pre-prepared things that you're used to? It lasts a lot longer. Really? Yes. That's the one thing, because I used to never order or buy local until now. Yeah. Yeah, but it lasts a lot longer, and it does taste better. Is it more work to prepare? Does it take you more time? Do you have to budget well, more time for prep? It, it was in the beginning. To me, in the beginning, it was until you know you get the swing of it and you see how good it is, and it's not so bad. But it is a little more. Okay. So you see a, it's a worth it. you see a value other than it just being local. It's a different quality product. Mm -hmm. It is. Judy was telling us that you had interns from KTEC mm -hmm. coming to help in the prep. Even their guidance counselor that comes by, she comes and check on them almost every day. And every time she comes in, she looks at the local food that we have, and she's like, and she can point it out. What is her name? Is Meredith. Kia. Yeah. She points it out, and she okay. says, yeah, she says, is it local? She says, oh, it looks so good. I bet I can tell you where it comes from. So she buys local too. So. Yeah. And isn't it a great thing for sustainable communities that we're teaching young people how to buy and prepare and use yep. local produce so that they'll do it and their kids will do it. And she, she was actually excited when yeah. she came in a couple of times and they were prepping it and cutting it up and she was like, oh, this is local. And she said it came from here. And she, she'd be telling them and they said, oh, okay. Great. Well, that's good. Yep. Here we are with Sarah Landsman at Java in the kitchen, and she's going to tell us all about this beautiful dessert she has here and an entire local foods lunch that she prepared today. Okay, Sarah, tell us about this lunch you prepared today for the staff. Yes, today Java had a staff holiday party at which I prepared a variety of local foods. Featured was this, we had a salad with local spinach supplied by uh, Mike's Planet Earth Diversified. The main course was a uh, was roasted vegetables that were all combined together. The local vegetables that we featured were sweet potatoes, potatoes, onions, and fresh turnips. All of that was roasted and then coated in a cilantro almond pesto. So the whole thing was vegetarian and low fat and very nutritious. I also made veggie burgers, fresh veggie burgers that were made with twin oaks tofu and also local onions. And we put a little cilantro almond sauce on that as well. I also made this apple crisp right here that we, I served today. It's made with local Albemarle Pippin apples that were grown in North Garden by Vintage Virginia Apples. The uh, filling has organic maple syrup in it and or organic oats. And there's very, very little sugar and no fat at all. So this is a very, it's delicious and it's a very, very healthy, nutritious, dessert as all of the food that I had cooked today is, which is my primary interest, is that the food is local and healthy. How did the staff react to a, a local food holiday party lunch? I got a lot of raves. People seemed to like it. In yeah. fact, I had one woman that came up to me here afterwards and said, I didn't think I would like an apple thing like that. You know, it's not as sweet as I'm used to, but when I tasted it, it was delicious, and she loved it. Well, so that's, great. that's what I what I can what I would like to be able to do is to change people's minds about healthy food and what they like and don't like. Well, that's great. Now, that's one of the things that Kim, the chef, said that that she noticed a difference, and she said that people could notice the difference of the quality of the food. Uh, and point out the things and say, is that local? So you see that also. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. The food is what makes it so good. It can stand on its own and, and you don't need to cover it up and coat it with sugar and, and a lot of other things because the flavor is in the apples, it's in the, all of the other ingredients, the 
organic maple syrup. Terrific. Okay, here we are at Jabba with the CEO, Gordon Walker. Tell us about how you got into local food here. Well, we got into it because we recognize that Jabba has a responsibility to preserve natural resources. At the same time, we want our people to live well. And so we set a goal of, of 20%, saying that in year one, 20% of our produce would come from local farmers. And uh, we were able to achieve that goal, but it was a Herculean effort. Uh, so it's now catapulted Jabba into the business of working with others to try to create a system so we can have something that's durable and so we can increase the amount of produce we use at our various different uh, sites. We do about 200,000 meals a year and we think if we can prove that it works for JABA that other institutional programs can uh, fall in line and do exactly the same thing. Well that's great. So you can create a model that you can share with other similar organizations for, for them to also incorporate the local food. What kind of benefits have you seen besides just nice tasting, fresh local food? Well, a, a couple of things. What it is, it's, it's helped us develop coalitions with people who weren't at, our, at the aging table at uh -huh. one time. In other words, uh, Piedmont Environmental Council, we've got local restaurant tours, we've got the Darden Business School, we've got everybody can find common stake and common interest in the food. Uh -huh. So what we've been able to do as well is it's, it's kind of turned on the seniors that we serve. In other words, they're able to do kind of a, a back to the future flip and take a look at what they were grown up to do. Uh, I mean, we've got a lot of people from the Depression, for example, where this is nothing new to them, or World War II. So we're actually bringing something back that gives value to their life experiences. And at the same time, we plan to have them talk to kids. Because a lot of kids don't even have any ideas, you know, well, yeah. where their food comes from. So this promotes intergenerational activities, which is pivotal to Java's mission, is how do we bring generations together to better sustain community? Well, that's really interesting. So not only did you have a benefit from just interacting with, with the local community and, and local food, but actually the people that you're serving found a, a psychological and emotional benefit from the efforts you made with a, the using local food. Well, it said very well. I mean, you know, too often times in American society, as people get old, we put them aside. Uh -huh. Being involved in this local food mo movement has put them right dead in the center. Maybe I shouldn't use the word dead, but right in the middle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they're engaged, and the more engaged we know, regardless of what age we are, the more active we are, and that improves your well-being. Well, that's great. And so tell me how you're going to have the, the older generation interact with the kids over this local food movement. Well, you know, there's two ways. We, we, we send elders into schools as mentors of kids. Mm. So not only do, will they work with them on reading, but they can also talk to them about farming and what experiences they had. Really good example, we're working on a project with Kid Pan Alley, which is where uh, a couple of songwriters locally, Paul Reisler and, and Terry Aller, have been going in elementary schools for a couple of years, listening to kids tell stories, and they put it to music. We approached them and talked about the idea of bringing elders together with kids. The elders talk about their upbringing. The kids work with them, and they develop songs. Well, just yesterday, one of the things, when they started talking about the past, what came up was what was so important to them was knowing where your food came from. Really? And so you've got the kids hearing this from the elders. It's going to be put into some kind of music. I mean, they create a DVD out of it and so uh -huh. forth. And then performances uh, tonight. Uh, so that's one way. And also kids come to the, to the centers and participate in activities. And to the extent that we can move forward and really try to develop within our area some farm to school program, why not have elders as retirees working with kids in gardens around the schools and so forth. So it's just a, it's a jumping off point. We had no idea when we set this goal of 20%, all the opportunities right. that we create. I mean, it's involved a lot of hard work on our staff to help us reach that goal. But it's also opened up all kinds of new avenues for, for Java to play a meaningful role in our community. So it's, it's really interesting. You've, you've described a number of, of very valuable benefits. What did it really cost you as far as effort and, and even in real dollars uh, in an, over normal operating budgets to make these changes? Well, it, it cost us, I think, in the area of about 10% more in the cost of food in year one. But as we work with others in this community, hopefully to create a local food hub or some ways to better enable a farmer's product to get to us, we hope to be able to bring down that cost to where price-wise it's a lot more competitive with products that come from afar. I, th I think the other thing that we've, we've come to realize from this is that 
you know, to the extent that we can utilize local food here, it also benefits our staff. I mean, our, we're even talking now about the possibility of Java staff becoming its own CSA. Uh -huh. uh, so it's just, it's kind of a ripple effect, and that's just really a good feeling. So there's a way to delineate what extra you pay for the product coming in, and what extra effort and labor is, is taken to handle that. Is there any way to actually measure the benefits? Well, I think we, you know, our nursing staff, for example, takes a really good look at whether, uh, how, what effect we're having on hypertension mm. by, and what effect we have on diabetes and so forth. So if you can do a baseline of measurements, which we already do, and now introduce into this access to fresh produce, uh -huh. access to other types of product that are purchased locally, what impact does it have on the quality of their well-being and health? And so that's something we plan to put into play now in year two of our local food initiative. Well, that's great. So maybe we can come back and talk to you in a year and, and see if we can't put some, some numbers to both of those and see how the equation balances. Only if we have positive results. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> like, you don't want them coming out to your farm if you had a bad year. Right, right yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's like, you see it's those bugs? It's all there. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, it comes with the territory, right? Okay. Yeah. Java's mission is to, to build and support sustainable communities that promote healthy aging for people of all ages, okay? And if we're looking at sustainable communities, then we're looking at where the food's coming from. And the food's coming from 3,000 miles away or 1,500 miles away. That's not very sustainable for our community. So we started looking at um, where can we get local food? Can, you know, what if this can be outsourced locally? Uh -huh. Anyway, so our first goal was to have 20 to 25 percent of our meals outsourced locally. Okay. And um, we started doing that last year, or this year, during the summer. How do you measure that? We have um, VDA regulations, Virginia Department of Aging regulations, okay. say what has to be in our meals, what components. You have to wow. have a dairy, you have to have a meat, you have to have a whole grain, you have to have a fruit and a vegetable. So if that's five elements making 100% of the meal, if you take one of those elements and make it local, that's 20% of your menu okay. that day. So all we had to do, well, I say all, looking back, it was a pretty big thing to do, <laughs> um, is figure out what of those elements are the easiest to get locally. Well, obviously fruits and vegetables. Um, the other stuff we'll tackle down the road as we raise our goal, the percentage of our goal. So we started with fruits and vegetables, and we thought, okay, we're going to start in season because that's the easiest time to get local food. And um, by the time we got through the drought and by the time we um, started putting the food in the menus, we were off. It was so easy to do 20 to 25 percent of our menus sourced locally. I mean, I had to alter the menus. What I had planned originally had to be changed, uh -huh. so it, was, it could be a day-to-day -day change. Um, we had to be really flexible. The cook would order something, and I would get a bushel of stuff in instead. You know, right. oh, don't use that stuff from California. I just got some in from, right. you know, just up the road. <laughs> yeah. So let's use this. You know, and there were lots of challenges, not barriers, but challenges that uh -huh. you know provided opportunities for us. And um, you know, in, in traveling around, I hear a lot of people saying, "Well, I don't have the money, and I don't have the, you know, we don't have the staff to prepare local produce." Well, those are all opportunities for improvement. So in bringing in the local produce, it, it was difficult for the chef to get all of that local produce peeled and chopped and cooked and ready for the meal. And we realized we just didn't have enough staff in our kitchen, which is what every restaurant, every institution, everybody who runs a commercial kitchen is going to tell you there's never enough staff to prep that, that fruit, vegetable, yeah. or whatever you're getting from the local farmer. So we thought, well, here's an opportunity. So there's the stuff you get that isn't local comes more prepared? It's totally prepared. When I buy it frozen from my local distributor, okay. I shouldn't say a local, he is a local distributor, but he gets it from way far away. So they're like cryo packs <laughs> or something already? Frozen packs already chopped up, ready to throw into the steamer and cook. Right. Okay, right. whereas if it's something I get, I gotta chop it, I gotta peel it, I gotta get it ready just to get to the steamer to cook it. We thought, now there's an opportunity we can do something here. We have students who come in a couple days a week. We try to, um, arrange my um, orders to come in the days that they're here so that they can prep them and it takes the load off the chefs. So that way basically we're getting something already kind of ready to roll by the time it goes into the steamer. So that was just a, a really fantastic opportunity. 
Local food is like having kids. If you wait around until you have enough money to have children, you'll never, never have children. <laughs> if you wait for enough money to buy local produce and to you know, get the staff to prep it, you'll never get local produce in your menu. You just got to start with it. And realizing that we needed to get this program going here, we also realized that you know, we need some money to support it, so we applied for grants. And we still apply for grants. Um, we've, we've formed uh, a lot of partnerships, we've, we've done a lot of research, and we, you know, we've used UVA students to do some research for us. Again, we didn't have the money to do this, we just, they needed projects and we needed the work done, so a beautiful mm -hmm. partnership was born. Um, and, and I kind of feel in sustainable communities that partnerships are what make the community sustainable. Rather uh -huh. than looking outside your resources and outside the community, or especially outside the community to find answers, you look amongst yourself and the, the, the peers that you have and the other groups, you know, I mean, we're working with um, Piedmont Environmental Council, we're working with um, K-Tech as an example, we're working with Virginia Tech and their extension service, um, so that you know, we're not just looking at where our next meal is going to come from locally, but is that meal going to be here 10, 20, 30 years from now mm. so that we can, you know, as people grow up on local food, number one, they're going to, by the time they get to us, they're going to be a whole lot healthier if they're eating properly. Um, and, and, and just to be able to make sure that communities and, and people of all ages in the community are having access to the local food, no matter what the income, no matter what your ethnic background, no matter where you live, if you're rural or you're urban, mm -hmm. you should have access to good, nutritious local food. And we're, we kind of have taken on the belief it's like a four-pronged fork system. Uh -huh. You eat for flavor, you eat for nutrition, you eat for the environment, and you eat for the local economy. And what are those four things possibly going to be? Local food. So you can ask yourself, am I making every bite count? Uh -huh. What I'm putting in my mouth, am I getting the nutrition? Is it the best taste it can be? Am I helping the economy locally? And, I'm, and am, I helping, am I helping the environment? And if you can say, I'm eating a four-pronged mouthful of food right now, that's pretty darn good. <laughs> so, um, but, but not to fear. It doesn't have to be four-prong all the time. This is not an all-or-nothing venture. Um, one of the things that we really advise with people is, you know, like I said before, it, it just admit that there's going to be challenges, but don't see them as barriers. See them as opportunities and reach out to people to help you solve those challenges. So here we are at Jabba, and we've talked with the nutrition director, a chef, and the CEO how they use local food here in their facility and all of the seniors that they serve in the local community. I'd like to thank all of you for being here today and talking with us and sharing your great stories of how local food has affected your facility and the community at large. Thank Anything you. you'd like to tell us, Gordon, before we take off? Well, no, it's just we, we hope that our experience, uh, others will grow from. No pun intended. <laughs> For more information about Meet the Farmer TV, visit our website, meetthefarmer.com. Meet the Farmer TV has been made possible by the generous support of Planet Earth Diversified, Makia Video Productions, and Frank Melly Productions, with additional support from Flavor Magazine, serving the Piedmont's local food and wine culture.